Hello, can you hear me? We are live, Salt Lake City, Utah for the quarterfinals as Mondo Ortiz from Norwalk, California goes up against Paul Brady from County Cabin. My name is Dave Vincent alongside John Bike. We have people sticking their hands and trying to give us food here in the broadcast booth. I'm trying to tell them that was back when I used to be fat. We used to have to shuffle that food in. It's well, we don't need to do I'm that still anymore. accepting it. You're taking oh, the food. Absolutely. Okay, not a bad call. We are already had some fireworks that Emmett Pichot Robbie McCarthy match gave us what we thought we would get uh, that was a, a a lot of court time a little bit of drama between the referee and the players but ultimately Robbie McCarthy did uh, carry through so he will play the winner of this one Mondo Ortiz and uh, Paul Brady the gunner now in a strange twist last night at the seating party uh, Mondo Ortiz had the choice of going to the upper bracket or going to the bottom bracket and he chose playing Paul Brady, which I, I think kind of amazed everybody, but somehow he has a strategy here. Yeah, that, that surprised everybody for sure, and we'll, I just don't know. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, it probably felt good the moment he did it, but probably not so much I later mean, on. You got a guy who hasn't lost. All right, guys. I want him. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, this announcement you guys ready? from the referee is quite loud through our headphones. My two linesmen are George and John. Okay. Serving first, last year's Players' Champion from Cavan, Ireland, Paul Brady. First time qualifier for the Players' Championship from Los Angeles, California, Armando Ortiz. Best of luck, gentlemen. Zero play zero. Yeah. Point. Beside just the on paper. Just One play zero. The Brady. You, all, you actually want to. Short ball. I, I love the shot. Probably my favorite moment of that entire. Second serve. That entire thing last night was the quick shot of Brady. Like big beat. Poker facing it. But yeah. yeah. Like, oh, really? We'll see what Armando's got up his sleeve there. Zero plays one. We saw, I believe, three broken balls in that last match. I expect to see about six here. Two absolute gunners. One actually known as the gunner. We'll say, though, Armando... I mean, toe-to-toe -to -toe in New York. That's, that's probably partly in his head when he made the pick. I, but... And we discussed extensively how Brady was, has just been working his way back into shape. And you just got to expect a, a fitter, sharper Brady here than, than we've seen in the other two tournaments. I mean, he's still won them both, but his goal seems to be this year to be peaking for this one and then carrying over to, to our nationals in Minnesota.
Now we saw these two play in New York. And Mondo was starting to pull the feather out of his cap as he was playing two re plays one. remarkable handball. And I think in the process of almost stunning Paul, I think he's using some of that leverage saying, hey, you know that I had you and I should have beat you and now I'm going to come at you again. I thought there was a little bit of contact there. I thought Mondo also looked back at Paul, but he didn't take it. One plays two. Now you've played against Mondo, I'm sure, John, being in Southern California, his serve, when it's on, it's just unreal. Absolutely, man. Really gets locked in on his height, pulls the serve, and Mondo oh, right back at him. But uh, yeah. Paul, he was trying to get out of your way. And he's hitting it so Got hard, there's over. almost no margin for error on the height, and he's, but he's One still locked in that over. small area, it's amazing. Mondo just got punched right in the face. Paul Brady has that wide swing sometimes, and now he gets hit again. Now Paul's apologizing to Mondo after Mondo was apologizing to Paul for being in his way. One place, two over. That's sometimes a good wake-up call. No short of, a, of adrenaline in there right now. That's a beautiful touch. Paul has an amazing corner kill. Doesn't right get now. credit for it, an underhand paddle that he sometimes Two can hit one. as hard as anybody has ever hit an underhand paddle before. And at that one, he just feathered beautifully so it wouldn't come out far enough for Armando to retrieve. Second serve. Armando, of course, on his heels from the power, and then all of a sudden that comes at him. That out. And this is the Armando Ortiz. We, we probably will see a lot of. He one loves this pace. Two. Not likely that Brady's going to change his game. So we're kind of going to see strength against strength there. Side out. Two plays one. Short ball. Second serve. That's a big setup right there. gives that ball back to the front wall. Series of quality shots here. Again, he John. Yep. Oh, no, What's and he does it take? again. Somebody's going to have to call a timeout after this. It might be me. See how this ends. Who's going to gun this down? Paul, another backhanded flip so up to the front wall. Wow. And he waits for that ball, and it doesn't do Looks anything. Like Paul says it's broken. Broken ball at 2-1. It could be double digit ball breakage. What a great way to start <laughs> or to end that rally. <laughs> and Paul has a little slight smile on his face. He knows the irony there. That was one of the best rallies we've seen Paul engage in in quite some time, and it ends on a broken ball. Paul, you sure? You got it? Taking a quick time out here as we warm up this ball. What What is the over-under? You, you, you went off and said six. But gosh, it's two to one. There's already one broken ball. Yeah, I don't know what to say. <clears throat> All right, guys. Paul was serving that. Play over, two, place one. Oh, they thought there could have been an avoidable there, John. Just barely got around him. 
Paul goes for that right corner kill. Paul's going to be extended here. The score might be lopsided in the end, but you see Paul's really going to have to focus because Mondo Three plays one. is offensive minded. And if you just have a slightly bad day, which doesn't look like Paul at all looks bad at all at this moment. I might have said all too much there. Yeah, these, these rallies have been like a series of wind sprints, not a, not, not a break to be had. <coughs> Mondo's got to be thinking, I've Four, worked awfully one. hard for that one point I have. Short ball. Second serve. It's one of those qualities that I like about Mondo is that his left hand has really developed the last one couple years. Four. Mm -hmm. It's fearless with it. Just always the comparisons to one of his mentors, Vince Munoz. Any spot in the court, if he's sidearm, it might be bottom board. Either hand. Two plays four. Three matches in, and I don't believe the club has come up yet, but we do want to give a shout out to the newest member from West Texas, Mark Gilmer, tuning in, offering his own commentary on the match. Side out. Or just re saying exactly what I said earlier. <laughs> I want to thank Mark for Four, place two. watching this live broadcast. Four to two. Early fireworks here between Paul Brady and Mondo Ortiz, but that's exactly what we expected. Paul missed that shot. Well, he contact, had a lot of room you. all the way down the left wall. Unfortunately, Four some kind two. of breakdown in communication. He led us to believe he had a local connection here that would be uh, running, running errands for us. And th that did not. He has not come through to this point. That was a, not a good move on his part. There will Two the plays the next member of the club might very well be from Utah, but <laughs> I know it will not be. <laughs> Paul seemed to perfect that little flip up there with his left hand. Mm -hmm. A lot of players can't do that from that angle. Paul goes back and acts like he's going to hit the ceiling shot, and instead he just goes right into that sidewall, flips it around. Two. You can't do it with your opponent standing in the front court. They have to think you're hitting the ceiling. And Paul just baits him into a hand air. Point. It takes a lot of shoulder strength as well. If you have a bad shoulder, you just Five can't take that two. shot. Smart. Yeah, uh, uh, kind Time of how we, we ended the Denver broadcast, minute, six, place two, speculating Paul serves. While, while you were contemplating a trip to the emergency room for the amazing amount of work you did that weekend. Uh, we just really expect Paul, if, they, if, if nobody got him in those first two tournaments, it's going to be a really tall order for someone to get him here. Biggest stage, most, most time he's had to prepare. I mean, it's, it's going to be a tall order. And, and deeply, you know, Paul, of course, likes the prize and the accolades and all that stuff. But in his mind, he's preparing for the national championships. And what a great way of doing it. You're closing out the season with three straight tournaments before going out there and, you know, doing what he can to get that 10th title. 10th title. Wow. And I'm, he's using this one as a platform to get into shape and get back into it. He looked really shaky in New York. Then he comes back in Denver and looks a little bit better. I mean, obviously better. And here he looks looks good. But you know, Paul always wants perfection, and so he's preparing for something grander than we all know. He took the senior championships off in singles, led to a 
Robbie McCarthy win. Paul Play ends resumes. up winning the doubles Six there. Plays two. But his master plan was to get into shape for singles. National championship in this tournament. And there's another nice reverse power left-handed serve. I, I should say it's a right-handed serve, but down Seven, the left side. Two. So Mondo misses his shot, John, and Paul yeah. doesn't his. Yeah, you got a match Eight, play two. near perfect with near perfect if you stand a chance. Like that. Serve was high, yeah. but that's what Mondo has to do any chance he gets. Good analysis. Two plays right eight. There. Let's see what Mondo does on the serve. The one down the right is deadly. Short ball. It's just like a laser. Of course, if he doesn't hit it short. Second serve. Two. Short. Peel. One agrees. The other couldn't see up to the short ball. Second serve. Don't know what Paul was looking back at the referee for there. Two plays eight. Hey, I backed into him. How come he didn't hit me? <laughs> Two serves eight. Short. Second serve. Well, Mondo, like McCarthy earlier, not hasn't found that serving groove at all yet. But wow. That was about he found uh, that shot right there. He ha hasn't had it the whole match here, but he can get points like eight. that. On, on, on McCarthy had over an hour to find his form in that first game. I don't, I don't think you're going to have that much time in this matchup. That's the one thing about Paul that it's hard to say about other players that are in the game right now. You have to find your form immediately. The second you walk in there, play the Point. game of your life, and by the way, no pressure. <laughs> Three plays eight. But really, you have to come out. Was that, was that a replay? I thought he already had. Yeah. I thought so as well, but it was just a side out that one time that Mondo got that back, that left-handed kill was a side out. That wasn't actually a point. Oh, I thought I, I was commenting on his short first serve when that point happened. Hmm. And there Paul goes back. He's really sliding balls down the walls now more than I ever saw him do it. It's a great weapon when he's already established the best reverse into the left side I've three. ever seen. See how he goes over the top of that ball? Mondo dips another one into the corner. Yeah, there's no room for any of that at all. Point. Point. Ten plays three. Screen ball. On the serve. Mm, good clarification. Yeah. Still two serves, ten three. I was wondering. Short. Second serve. He's taking advantage of Brady's second serve. I'll say that. Three plays ten. Uh oh, that's an over hit from Paul. Point. Mondo's just as good as anybody in the world when it comes to that foot fault line Four kill plays shot. Ten. It's going low. Not a bad pickup from Mondo. Boy, look how low the ball's getting for both of these guys. Scraping. Strange shot from Paul. Never seen that before. Uh-oh, that's going to go all the way back to the front wall. Mondo might not catch it. Tough shot. Oh, and he luckily did get the winner, but 
That's just a crazy jungle ball that Paul hit up to the front wall, and I don't know how Mondo was able to put anything on that. That's, I think he had enough of a miss hit that it didn't quite reach Paul, but that's up to that point an incredible rally. And oddly, Paul almost dug Five it out. Here's the replay. Here's that ball goes all the way to the front wall, and gosh, Paul was there. He was there, and Mondo miss hit it so badly that it had nothing by the time it got to him. Paul just missing that slider down the right wall. Checks up on the right side, and Mondo gets another point. Asking now for a towel. Now you're starting to see some fireworks between these two. Actually, it's been fireworks since the beginning here. It has. It's a good call. Edel handball <laughs> and their motto, go play handball, here live on site at the sports mall in Salt Lake City, Utah. Edel handball. We sweat. We grunt. We leave our guts on the court. And we want you to join us at edelhandball.com sponsoring the Players' Championship. Court combat gloves, Edel Ice Shields, Edel Handball Apparel. You can follow them on Twitter Play resumes. at hashtag GoPlayHandball and hashtag Team Edel. Ramondo making a little run of his own. Seven plays ten. Short. Boy, Mondo has this way of hitting a short ball, and the ball seems to go faster after Second it hits the serve. ground. Than, I don't know what type of spin he's putting on that ball. What was that? Look at Paul. Not, not <laughs> I'd like to see the replay of that. Paul <laughs> passing Mondo and just putting his hand lightly on his seven. shoulder as he walked by. That was the KG veteran saying, I'm sorry. On the plus side, Mondo forced Paul to have to hit that perfect shot right there by coming up so high on that red carpet. Get a better second serve this time. Second serve. <laughs> Mondo's dangerous from there. Well, he's watched, Paul's watched his tape. We've commented extensively on Mondo on Point. those particular shots. He's well, deadly when it's coming at him 80 miles an hour. That's when true. When it's coming 30, short anything ball. can happen. I saw it short. You feel? <laughs> short. So yeah. well, Paul's better. not trying to make it land there, Second but serve. just the mere change of pace sometimes is enough. That's more like what he's trying to do. Oh, that was a huge nice natural hook nice. right there. You know, most smart return for Mondo there. A lot of players can hit a natural and a reverse, but 12. not a lot of players can hit him 90 miles an hour. That's a lot of movement on the wrist. I'm saying it's very smart to hit a 90 mile an hour natural. I agree. I'm saying the same, the same thing, but he but he but left not, it up. not to force a second kill in a row on a fairly difficult shot. He just struck a beautiful pass, like you said. Oh my gosh! And Paul's able to get that. And because of that get, Paul's back into the server's box. That was an amazing flip up from Paul Brady, who is showing us all that, hey, I'm not, there's more than just Emma Pichot that can get balls. We've seen some really tremendous play from Paul Brady here. Got the crack there. That out. Seven plays 12. Eight plays 12. Side up. Twelve plays eight. Not much you can do when a ball hits Point. a crack that deep. If you try to play it off the back wall, eight. it seems to skirt the back wall and go toward the left, and it's almost impossible to even get a hand on. 
Paul just missing that slide, John. Yeah, he's, boy, he's just unloading on every opportunity now. Mm. Check Mondo, it. Mondo rotating in right during Paul's shot there. It was a strange angle for us because everything from there looks like an avoidable hinder. But I think from this angle, or the angle at least Paul had, maybe it wasn't. I did hear a couple oohs from the crowd, and that's kind of sometimes an indication, but... Paul nope. didn't seem to think so. I mean, he never lets on anyway, but he, he apologized. I think he knew that Over he mishit that ball. He was just going to do a paddle flip eight. up, and there's not much he could have done with it anyway, but... Oh, oh, no, no. That's a tough screen to call right there. Mondo wants that back wall set up with Paul, positioned dead center. But no arguing here. Serves. Anthony Short. not driving Mondo nuts. One as it agrees, should one be. Disagree. Short ball. Thought that was short. Second serve. That ball definitely was short. No room for shots like that when you're playing Paul Brady. Fourteen plays eight. Hit ball. Plays eight over. Short. A little different contrast between this one and the last match that we watched. We're at the 16 minute mark here. With one of the players at 14 being Paul Brady and Mondo at eight. That's 22 combined points. Yep. We were at. Point. And there's that slow serve again that Mondo Love just change. barely skips in. And we've, we've seen it okay, so sure. often that you Paul, your gloves. you can't question Paul's Good. selection there. It's Mondo's proven that he's a little bit shaky at that pace. 15-8. Score here, 15-8. to eight. Sports bar inside the sports mall. Watching this live broadcast amongst their patrons there in that beautiful facility as you walk into the left. I don't know if you peeked I your head in there, but it's that, no. absolutely remarkable. And they're watching, so we want to wave to them. Thanks for your patronage. I also want to thank Ben Edel and Edel Handball, the title sponsors of this live broadcast. As I was saying earlier, you can follow them on Facebook at facebook.com backslash edl handball that's e d t l handball.com you can follow them on instagram at edl handball team edl sponsored r48 pros emma pichot robbie mccarthy and working up a deal more than likely with luis moreno and a couple of the others raising the profile of the world's top handball athletes official uh, partners of the wph and the race for eight players championship tour showcasing the hyper athletic and combative nature of handball. They're here on site right now. In fact, there was a lot I of hype can, leading can. up to Edel Handball. A lot of the guys are saying, you know, let's I make sure to get Ben out here. We want the gloves. And Ben already had the flight already sorted out. And so he's giving them what they wanted. What were we going to say? I just, I, I have a feeling he's lost track of time because you that spiel is exactly one minute what you just did there. Mm -hmm. And now we're finding ourselves filling time. Well, I think uh, what happened here was that the referee gave a shirt change to Armando Ortiz after the timeout was called. So I think we have an extra one minute. So that gives me more time to feed the meter. As they say, the next issue of the Handball Magazine will be hitting mailboxes next month. The May issue will be highlighting the National Collegiate Championships, Women's Classics, the Master Singles, in addition to health tips, instructional, local tournament results. USHA members can always log on to ushandball.org to access the e-copy of that magazine as well. I know you've done that, John. That's, well, that's, the, way it, that's the future right there. What's the present? It was the future, now it's the present. 15 plays eight. 
Brady, it's a two-game match at 21, tiebreaker to 11. That was a two-bouncer. Paul good picks way it up. To come out of a timeout for Armando. Eight, please, 15. Did he find his green laser? <laughs> and Brady sensing the urgency of not letting Armando get anything established. Gets right back into the box. Eight, eight. Armando seemed like he was getting some momentum, and then Paul just said, you know what? Every time you get into the service box, I'm going to give you my A-plus game. You're not going to score again. You said it earlier that this is the guy they call Gunner and another guy that's a Gunner. Just trading bombs. Eight plays 15. Point. Nine plays 15. Score here at nine to 15 in game one. Side out. So we're close at a point in the match where McCarthy turned his around by finally finding that great serving groove. Armando hit one beauty there, but then left the next one way too high and, and follows it up with a, another unforced error. 16 plays nine. So now they're at 17. And only 20 minutes, 20 minutes into this match. It Short seems ball. like it's much longer than that, but right at that 20 minute mark. Excuse me, I was, I was correct at 22 minutes. A lot of uh, action crammed into these 22 minutes. Nice dig right there from onto that ball. Looked like it broke or something. Is it Broken good? ball. I, well, I said there was going to be six. We're only at two. You know, I said this once before, John, but, you know, when Roy Hobbs hit that, that leather off the ball, he was touted as a hero in the local paper, but you know, they do it in handball and everyone's mad and they're throwing it at you and the ball's free here. Somebody's paying for it. He stood out there in the rain while the lights were all shattering and they're trying to find all the pieces of the baseball. I mean, the New York Knights have never been better since Roy Hobbs retired. This is game number one of the Race for Eight Championships in Salt Lake City, Utah at the Sports Mall where Paul Brady's going up against Mondo Ortiz. What a great looking backdrop it is here. Have you ever seen a sidewall all tathered with these logos brought to you by the Aces Salt Lake Dream Team? They have Ace Disposal, Ace hey Outdoor. Dewey's, that's my very, favorite, my very favorite tournament shirt is the nine. Dewey's Bail Bonds. Getting, getting loose. I like it so much, I go, I go to bed with it. It's my pajamas. I also lost a lot of weight, well, so that shirt. Anything that fit you last year would be like <laughs> a, what a, I'm saying. More like a moo moo. Well, that is very visually appealing. Uh, it's, a, it's a great thought, isn't it? And Ortiz just missing Boing. by the narrowest margin, but just way too often. 18 plays nine. It's a backhanded flip there from Brady, and that ball checks on the ground. Brady almost got a free gift. Mondo's back in the driver's seat and puts it away, and Tied we've out. seen more of those put-away shots from Mondo Ortiz with his left hand than in most any tournament that we've seen him play. I mean, he has done really absolutely nothing with his right hand Nine and everything with his 18. left. There's that right serving height. Nice return by Brady, though. Backed him up. That's a la Vince Munoz right there. Backed up close to 35 feet. Still took the first strike. 
Ten plays eighteen. Boy, I'm still surprised about Mondo picking Paul Brady in that first Boy. round and not going after Luis Moreno. I think he actually had a chance of defeating 18. Moreno today. He's playing. He's short. I'd say, I'd say he's playing as well as almost anybody, and the qualifying almost is. Second he, serve. You got Paul Brady in mind because nobody's playing as well as him. All right. But let's just say he does pull it off. Mm, what kind of great exactly mind? Right. That's what he was <laughs> thinking at the moment. <laughs> we'll be talking about it forever. And as he soon as I said he didn't have anything with his right hand, he's proven me wrong. <laughs> really enjoy the 12, fact that Mondo did something in New York that a lot of players won't do as we watch a serve here. Oh, Paul. That was actually Mondo playing over to the left on purpose, thinking that Paul would think that he'd overplay to the right. He almost baited him into hitting it right back at him, and that's exactly what happened. But Mondo is one of those guys that doesn't care about the type of gloves that are on his hands or the clothes that he wears. And you see other players are so hypersensitive when it comes to their gear. Mondo, during that tiebreaker, or excuse me, during the second game when he was playing well against Paul Brady, went over to the Edel handball gloves for the very first time and put them on and played with them, which is not what you normally do against the, one out. of the greatest players of your generation. 18 plays 12. And you're, oh. you're playing hot, and you switch gloves to a glove Short you've ball. never put on in your entire Good life. Deal. Well, I noticed today he just put on this the shirt Agreed. that he's wearing here. Short ball. Is also a brand one new shirt, but. How come there's only Second one serve. agreeing? I'm seeing the, the linesmen have some issues to work out. That linesman have been split all evening. As a referee, could you, during a timeout, go up and just say, I need a new lines judge over here? But how would you do? Put it oh. up. That was a contact, ball. right? That's an avoidable. I, was, I didn't get it out. I was going to call a hinder ball. He didn't see the ball at all. Thank you. Very polite. 18 plays 12. But who do you pick on the referee? The one that didn't agree with you? <laughs> I, I mean, just, I'm mostly seeing what, what Anthony's seeing. So, yeah. Fine. I'd, I'd, I'd ask that guy, what exactly are you seeing? If, <laughs> if you're not sure, you can you can abstain. 19-12. Short. Second serve. Wow. That was a nice camera angle of Mondo just twerking, not twerking, but yeah. twerking as he took the trunk of his body and swung well, around to 19. hit that shot. Boy, this is a crystal clear camera angle as well, John. It's streaming in high definition and it really looks clean. Some people were commenting that they felt there was kind of a blue tint to the court here. They felt it was like watching a cartoon. I'm seeing a very high quality picture. Smart shot there. Took his time, found the opposite corner. 12 plays 19. Nothing to appeal on that. Point. Visual obstruction, maybe a 13, tiny slide. 19. Short ball. Second serve. Wow. That's the mistake that Mondo's been making this whole match so far. He, he's 13. probably, David said he knows we're keeping stats. I actually don't. I depend on outside experts on this, but I bet you he's ended more rallies than Paul has because Paul has made almost just just a very few unforced errors up to my statistician says 13 plays 19 a lot of rallies ending on the hand of Mondo. like that one well, that's oh, you yeah. heard the crowd go wow really straighten that one out 14 plays 19 short ball Sounds to me like David Fink getting ready for Second his match serve. by analyzing this match <laughs> where anyone within earshot of him. I think, I think I'm hearing someone up there with that 
sort of expertise. Meanwhile, we haven't seen Nadia Alvarado at all, and there's a beautiful, crisp back wall kill shot from Paul Brady. Saw Nadi briefly, just, I, I'm talking at 30 seconds. Last night, we couldn't get him to leave the house 19, place after the seating party was over. He was the last to leave. There are more and more frequent stories of fun, loving, enjoying the experience, Nadi, in the last few years, and probably in the first 15 years of his career combined. Don't know what Mondo was thinking there. I agree with you on that. And now Brady serving to take game number one. Last ball game point plays 14. Short. Ooh, that's close. And if it was appealed, they'd have a split. Second serve. Probably one last chance here for Ortiz. Side out. Fourteen plays twenty. You don't see too many people rolling seven points off of Paul Brady, though. You don't. But what? What was the exact? It wasn't Second the exact serve. same. What was? What were the numbers in the first game? Moreno and Denver. <laughs> and the crowd, Point. that's probably what it'll take if he wants to run seven. Probably at least four or five shots like 15 that. 15 plays 20. Mondo's a fan favorite when he comes to these events. Uh oh, look oh, at that. Look on. at that. Oh, that ball checked up somehow. That should have stayed down. Look at that shot right there. As Mondo dips it in the ground at a crucial point, we've seen too much of that. And I think you're right. Now that I think about it, Paul's getting a lot of side outs. A lot of free points on those misses. And they're really 20, close 20, misses, too. That's the thing in playing Mondo. He's, miss, he's missing real close, but still a miss. <laughs> Look at that laser return from Mondo. This is going to be a party ball here. Nobody can get that. And Paul Brady takes down Mondo Ortiz in the game. Five minutes, and that was pretty darn entertaining here, 21 to 15 as we have game number two coming up in five minutes. In the meantime, though, it's Molly Trotter. She sits courtside with our number one seed in the women's bracket. Molly? This game just got over between Brady and Ortiz. What do you think separated Brady from Ortiz in that first game? What separated the two? Um, I think Brady just attacked from the outset. He was probably more consistent than Mondo um, throughout. Like, he really punished any back wall setups, whereas Mondo skipped the ball in, but having said that, like he hung in there well, and he wasn't too far off in the end, like so. I'm expecting a tight second game. And uh, do you think the score really reflected, you know, what game we just saw? Um, I think, yeah. Basically, um, Paul had a better start, like, and Mondo was chasing the game then, and he went for it, like, and he hustled well. But um, yeah, I think it was a fair reflection of the game. Do you think Ortiz is going to change anything in the second game? Um, no, I think he'll probably stick to his own attacking style of play and stick to the game plan and maybe it'll, it'll prove a different result this time. All righty, thank you for your commentary. Back to you guys. Well, it's an accurate commentary. I'd like to see somebody come along and just take a pie and just pie either uh, Molly Trotter right in the face like they do in baseball games after you win the game or, or get Katrina while she's talking. Well, we've got two more days. I would okay. save that for the ESPN3, though. Okay, all right, we're going to... Molly, that's going to happen. Sorry. Uh, but no, back to what Katrina actually was saying. She does believe that Mondo is going to stick with that style. Of course he's going to stick with that style. That's yeah. what he's going to do. But what he needs to do is actually stick to that style and then convert yep. because he's just missing. Yeah, too many narrow misses. It's definitely his, his chance at victory is to continue to go for those shots and just improve his percentages. Yeah, he has the right mentality. He's just not executing. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in three minutes. Stay around for John Bike, Dave Vincent, Molly Trotter. We'll be here in just a bit at racefreight.com.
Oh, prime time. We are rolling. <laughs> All right, Mama's gonna bring it home. Mama's okay. bring it home. Okay. 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 Come on. Watch this guy. Oh, oh backwards. Oh. Woo! Don't. Okay. It went into Bob and Carol's yard. Oh. No. Okay. Yeah. Here it is. Oh. Oh, Mom. Oh, Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. Yeah, All right. Let's see what you can do. Let's go. They might surprise you. Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle. We are back as we go to our uh, special satellite van as we have an interview with Mondo Ortiz. And they're going to get back onto the court here in about one minute. You're watching the WPH Players Championship. We asked him and, uh, a little bit about his open heart surgery and that comeback that he had. And this is what Mondo Ortiz had to say. At the time in 2009, um, I was at, I was attending Missouri State. And um, I was feeling kind of weakness in the core, you know. I feel, you know, a little dizziness, and I thought it was a lack of eating, a lack of sleep, you know, from studying all that. I was born with a heart defect, a heart murmur. Talked to the cardiologist, and, uh, and sure enough, I got to deal with my heart. You know, it was a four hour uh, surgery, so I got a mechanical valve in me. So it, was, it was up and down around that, around that time, but I pulled through. At one point, my cardiologist, the doctor, did say that you won't play handball the re probably rest of your life. And that really affected me so much. I mean, I told myself, I don't want to let this uh, defeat me. And I know I have to come back somehow, some way. Boy, did he actually come back. And he made a big splash that year, just within 11 months of that open heart surgery. Uh, as you call, recall that pre-Tucson qualifier that we had before the race for eight season kicked off. And he defeated uh, the number one seed, Alan Garner. Lost to Nadia Alvarado in the semifinals of a tournament that Nadi made to the finals and lost to uh, Sean Lenning eventually, but it was really Mondo who played his heart out, no pun intended, actually maybe slightly, I but he has made a great comeback. Gave the next year off, but then came back this year and he qualified for this main event. Remarkable story. And Paul probably has a lot more yellow jerseys than he has nicknames, but he's breaking out the gunner jersey this game. What in the world was that? He, he says, he's sorry. Whooping, yeah, he, he wasn't trying for the kill. I think he was trying to push it deep left, hard at deep left. Zero play zero. Paul Brady wearing, as you said, that yellow jersey. That was the one that we gave him in the quiet ceremony for winning New York. He also, also has another one for Denver. It actually says Gunner on the back, and that surprises me that he, he put this one on because I kind of did that one as a slight, zero, zero. slight joke. And uh, he likes it. It's a pretty cool nickname. It's probably the best nickname in handball. Actually, I should say the most accurate. Hello. Zero play zero. Short. Second serve. This game's starting right a lot up. like the first, just bombs away right from the get-go. Zero play zero. 
Short. Let's see if these guys can start converting just a little bit. And I, I mean, guys, I'm talking about Mondo Ortiz. Yeah, Paul's been doing what he's had to do. I, I just have a feeling that if Mondo was able to convert at least 50% of those, we might have saw a, a score that was a little bit closer to. Yeah, I'd go out on <laughs> a limb and say if he made about six more of those, it would have been play zero. a much closer game. And as it was, getting 15 points off Paul Brady is not easy with, to do. In with fact, the number of unforced errors he had. The only yeah, person to really be able to do that is Mondo the last time they played in New York. Of Zero course, Robbie one. McCarthy took him to a tiebreaker, but Luis. it just doesn't happen much. And Luis Moreno in Denver, Colorado. Now we're just going to run down the list and nail everybody <laughs> that I, actually I missed. 15 is a little disappointing when you look at it that way. One plays one. It's Mondo's plan A, B, and C. One plays one. When it drops below the waist, attack. Hey, that's rarely fooled Brady that time. Brady's wow. been reading his direction very well. Mondo okay. looks a little bit different than he did in, in uh, Denver, Colorado. Plays one. I just, yeah, he loves this p pace of play for sure, but I've seen Brady getting an outstanding jump on Mondo's serves, and maybe the first time the whole match. He got fooled on that previous point. One plays two. Short ball. It was an inside out, Second no look serve. down the right. And I think Paul actually telegraphs that just slightly before he serves. We're talking about two or three seconds. Did you see that little hitch before he went into the box? I know, John, you study that stuff. I used to. <laughs> Set out. Two plays one. Referee said to us in between games, I, I think both of these players right. are foot faulting, but I can't quite see from Thank my angle. Sir. Yeah, they're and both. I, I need a not line judge to kind of help me out. Like right there, Mondo's way over the line. But by the time he's pivoting over the line, you got to watch the ball. His serve mm -hmm. is crossing the line. That, I've been in that position as a ref often. So I only. Three plays one. It has to be obvious enough that even though I'm looking at the 20 foot line, my peripheral Short. vision still catches that foot. And that's what that's got to be a big foot fault. So but I, I can you make an executive I decision and say, I'm going to put you in charge and find somebody that can stand next to you and you're my foot fault guy? Or no, I think the ref should call it all. I, the, the big enough ones you can see. Like, I've, I don't like the little, mm -hmm. I don't know the right word here that for Set broadcast, out. but the one plays three. The minor foot faults oh, I, I wouldn't be too worried about. But You knew that no matter what you said right there, you're going to get I, punished I by me somehow. I thought of, like, six different words, and none of them were clean. Mm -hmm. not, not a, but, uh, yeah, you get that foot fault where it's a good three or four inches over the line. You can still see that in the background of watching the serve. Let's take a look at that sidewall if we can, which is right on the short line. Well, they're clearly getting over a little. Just is it enough for the ref to just see it in, in his wide field of vision? Because the ref has to be focusing on the ball going over the line. Now, Paul Brady's historically been a guy that One is a foot falter in big matches. Let's see what happens here. Same short thing. It's, it's a pivot. His, he's landing close, too close to call, and he pivots over. But while he's pivoting over, Second While he's pivoting it over, the ball's crossing the short line. So hot, not easy to see both. Wow, look at that ball just ride that side glass. <coughs> now, if we can look at that one more time, now you'll see the hey, difference Mondo's here. Mondo, I think, <laughs> sometimes is one. out of the box to start and great, finish. Great big. Look at that. Way over the line, John. Well, the same thing. Barely over on the, on the land and then the pivot. While the ball's crossing the short line, the pivot's going all the way over. I thought that ball broke. Side out. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the pre-break. One plays three. I think Mondo also thought it, but he didn't press the issue. Well, if he's telegraphing it, Mondo's not Two reading bounces. it. Thank you. Good call. How about since you're seeing it, why don't you yell out right next time Two you see it? Three. Mondo's not seeing it, and I'm not seeing it. 
right what? Foot? That no, the uh, that misdirection serve to the right. That, oh yeah, that, you know he actually tips it before he gets in there and does it. I'll, I, I'll I show you next time it happens. I do. I want to hear you make that call. I'll, I'll have even more respect for you. Well, I almost did it a few minutes ago, and then I decided not to for some reason, and then he did it, and I. <laughs> it seems to be a little mannerism that he has. Three plays two. As he <laughs> walks in, sort of like a, a thing he does, but. The most obvious one ever, and it didn't matter because he located it so well, but. Silvera had this move where he would just bounce ball over and over again and stare at the right crack. And that was a 100% tip off that he was going reverse to the left. And like you could like run over there and I don't know if he thought he was fooling you or whatever, but <laughs> he usually hit it well enough anyway. That <laughs> but that was the one of 100% tip like five <laughs> seconds in advance. I'm bouncing the ball staring at the right crack. Three plays two over. Well, I always think that Mondo is one of those guys. It's a s he much like Toddy staring to the right, serving to the left. And there's Mondo getting another point here. I think Paul tips it off as he walks in right about here when he's in the service box. Really? Four, I, I, two. Wanna, I, wanna, I need you to alert me to that. Yeah, I, I'm hoping it wasn't just a feeling I had or if it was something I, that's legit, but I, I've seen it three times in a row. Oh. But point. seeing that shot tells you just how few balls Paul's actually put in the floor. I mean, he's not razor sharp rolling the ball out, but he's not really giving anything away. That was very unusual there. I believe our scoreboard was right with the five to two, but we'll see what this call is here. Sometimes we don't always hear what the ref has to say. Especially when I'm talking over him. <laughs> Mondo Ortiz. Getting that towel. And I think that kind of threw our system off and thought made us think on the scoreboard that he lost a point, but I think it really is five to two. Play resumes. Five plays two. On the money. Left here. Fascinating. But Paul is reading Mondo well. Yeah, well, I've he hasn't seen him fooled once. You know, it, Paul's. It's strange we all know that Paul doesn't lose matches and everybody just assumes every match he plays he's going to win. Therefore, they always give him the win. But then they also, strangely, underestimate some of the really good things that he does, like the defensive plays, yeah. the return of serve, uh, the left hand to the ceiling, the wraparound. All those things that he does are so well and he gets no credit for it, yet he mm -hmm. gets all the credit for all the other things. It's much like yourself, John, where everyone would talk about Five, how hard you two. hit the ball, but if anyone ever played you, they'd realize that you were defensively one Short of the very ball. best that ever played the game, and yet your name is never brought up unless someone like me starts talking about it. But Well, we've got to fix that. <laughs> but, well, thank you for that, but when you said that about Paul, that's pretty much what I said about Ch what I thought about Chapman, although that was obvious to most people. Just had so many different ways to win. I just I, after every match I didn't win with him. I, if I just did this one thing different, and the next match I would solve that problem. And he would and there's one counter more react it with something else. So, so it's like he had like nine different ways, like like Paul, nine Two different things five. that not everyone's noticing, and always always something, some kind of go-to thing. <laughs> Laser right there from Mondo. Yeah, Paul can't be leaving that serve up. Right out. Five plays two. Boy, and there's nothing worse than being in that server's box and knowing that you have to thread a needle because Point. that's the place where you need to be relaxed. You have to have your th your breath in the right place, and then you're so worried Six, about a guy taking the ball off the revolving door and hitting two inches high. You kind of flinch up a little bit. Well, it's good to see Paul tested early in the tournament here, but you knew with this elite field of eight, it was a definite possibility. That's where Paul's dangerous. That's, that's how we answered that test. A little bit more fitness I maybe know. or it's mojo nice. from Mondo. I think he could have worked his way back up there for a diving get, but Two play six. almost like he was so mad at himself, he just gave up immediately. You still, even though you, you see Paul do it pretty often, you're still not sold on the fact that from the shoulder he's going to go down with that. Well, there's two serves in a row or two out mm. of three serves now that Paul just saw a flat roll out from Mondo. He went to an underhand lob, I and I don't know if Paul wants to go back Six to that, although I think two. that's the formula against Mondo. Let's see it, if just, it just can't be that shallow. I mean, it, it just can't that's be true. that easy. 
point. Mondo now starting to space Seven, out a lead. Two. So he looked right. And he went right. See? I, I do want you to call Brady's next misdirection server the right. Did he do well it? Nope. it? just doesn't this, this, line this up. This isn't going to be it, is it? Two plays seven. <laughs> I have a feeling the ball eventually might make it there, but it's not <laughs> certainly not what he's going to do here. See, and Paul knows Point. this. He saw some video that Emmett Pichot did to Mondo in Denver. Three, seven. He also sat courtside. I'm sure that he studied this. He knows exactly what he wants to do here. Well, there's a weakness. Oh, no. But he found it, though. He's, so He's found it. it. How comfortable is he at this pace? So I don't know. We'll, but we'll find out. But the, even during that rally, Paul oh, put yeah, it right in that in, same he spot. He in charge the whole time. Absolutely. I, uh, he's going to put it three. right in the same spot that he put the serve. I saw it short. Yep, I agree. Peels, both agree. A crucial Second lineman serve. switch there between games. We're going to be seeing some higher quality. Not a bad shot. Well, we were speculating between games what would happen if Mondo just cut down a little bit in his errors. And uh, I mean, here it is. Eight plays three. Got himself a healthy lead right now. Short ball. Well, I think what Mondo's done is actually got a little bit more Second control serve. with that power, not hitting it so hard. I think sometimes you get amped up against Paul Brady. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems to me he's not hitting it as hard as he did. That like that right there. Well, that was like a Point little more out, methodical Paul, for him, and first, that's a smart timeout. But plays three, one minute. Paul Brady doesn't take timeouts. I mean, this is, this is a rare thing. But what I'm noticing with Mondo, even on those power kill shots that he's taking, he's t just five miles an hour off to mm -hmm. give him a little bit more control. And it seems to be working. He's not skipping balls in. And there is a yeah, timeout here. Incredible level of adrenaline just wearing off a tiny bit more in his zone now. We talked to Paul Brady earlier uh, in, the, in the week, and we asked him what drives him to be the best. And, and this is exactly what Paul had to say. Let's go to that interview. You know, I just want to win as many titles as I can when I can. You know, I'm lucky enough. Thankfully, to, to be in a position to play at a high level, and do you know, I want to strive for greatness in, in, in what I'm doing. So every match I play, every point I play, every tournament I play, I try to win it. You know, and then when this is all over, I can look back and say I gave it my best shot, and that's what drives me on every day. That's what's going to drive me on tomorrow and this weekend, hopefully. I'm sure, John, you could relate to that as well, putting it all on the court every time you you play the game and then you get to be a guy like yourself where you're in your upper 40s and your body isn't cooperating and you si you, you almost have the same feeling when you want to quit. You say, you know, I can't give it my best. I, I kind of have to leave this game now. But I'm sure you can relate to the what he's saying there. Yeah, that's just, he learned that lesson at such an early Take age. Ball, I don't I don't think I really had that that frame of mind till a little bit, a couple of years in, but it sounded like I was listening Play to my father in law nine, there. Three. Like that, that wisdom that those multiple time champions have. You know, there's a you got a finite period and I love that expression, strive for greatness. It's, it's make the absolute most out of the time you have. And meanwhile coming out of that timeout, plays three. Mondo plays that last rally perfectly. Another good one from Mondo. Picked up from Paul Brady. Goes inside mm. out. Paul's going to get the best of Mondo on that one, though, and Mondo knows it. He made a mistake. He mm. checked that ball into that right wall. That's, this is the way a rally should be. Three the, first, the first sign of the crack, the rally's over. One, one small mistake, and that's it. Interesting return right there from Mondo. Paul just does what he does best. Right corner kill, one inch high. And he gets a first point in about point. 15 minutes. Four plays ten. <laughs> Side out. Ten plays four.
another setup. Hold on. Hinder ball. Ten plays four over. This should end the rally, but nope. Popped it into the wall. This is tough right here. Black hole. Ball doesn't make it to that left side wall. Paul punches it back. Mondo with that Good laser Lord. left hand. It gets a round of applause from the crowd. And you're right. The toughest shot in the rally and why he won that rally was how well he played that difficult left corner ball. That's At that time, it looked like Paul was taken over. 11 plays four. Mondo stayed in the attack. Oh, just barely misses a flat crack there. That was an interesting little bunny hop that Paul put on that ball into the right corner. Mondo almost dug it out. Now it's a side out. Four to 11. Mondo Four up. plays 11. Oh, that's three in this game. That's, that's what Mondo did in the first game. Side out. If you just tuned in. Had the opportunity, just four. slightly missed. 11 to four now. Mondo trying to force this into a tie-breaking situation. And that's just impossible there. That ball looks like it's going to come out to you. You see the shadow of the ball. It's mm -hmm. okay. that side glass is just really, really tough. And you talk to some people, they say, well, just watch the ball. Well, sometimes there's two or three of them four over plays there. 11. And hit at that pace and location. No chance on any court, I'd say. Mondo could have this slip away from him really quick right here. You know that Paul can score him in a hurry. Good point. Five plays 11. Thank you. Contact. Five, 11 over. You know, we take for granted how, how classy these players are for the most part with each other in situations like this and calling your own doubles and wrist balls because it's just how they are. Point. But right. I've had the opportunity to play a little outdoor with, with brand new players, and they just have no idea what you're doing when you make a call like that in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> they just, I just played through, <laughs> through the whistle. I just play until someone tells me I did something Six, wrong. Well, most 11. casual sports fans and athletes always have a referee standing near them or some kind of judge will tell them immediately that you feel the or when you're calling your own, you're pretty much arguing your own point of view. You're not saying, sorry, guy, I did charge that mm -hmm. time. I, I mm -hmm. <laughs> Could you imagine that? <laughs> no. NBA Two basketball. Serves. Six plays 11. So Paul creeping. Paul going overhand here. That's tough. Ooh, what a nope. smooth swing, though. I like him. I like him not going all out at that. I mean, it was just an, an inch from a skip, but I like the tempo of that swing. Eleven plays six. Oh, oh, oh that left play. hand is just brilliant. You know, sometimes John players will just say, "I, I just play better this way. I'm going to take all those balls Twelve with my left six. hand." I think Mondo's come to that point. He looks very confident in his touch and his tempo on the left side right now. <laughs> Lordy, and the announcer's curse does not <laughs> happen that time. I don't know how he developed this so well, but thirteen plays. You six. almost want to just keep it away from his left. On the other hand, his right hand is so much more powerful that right, if, if it's not serve. as accurate, it's still going to score points with the pace. Raimondo got away with one there. Gets the first serve Check back the ball, please. after hitting a second serve setup. <laughs> 13 6 over. That's a big setup for Paul. I don't think that was a good serve. Well, that could be avoidable. It was a strange rally from the very beginning. Over hit setup off the back wall from Mondo that converts into six plays 13. A little bit of congestion, and Paul gets a side out at six to 13, trailing by seven here. Yeah, very often the funkiest, most difficult situations for referees just start with a guy just 
you hit one ball where you don't think you're going to hit it, and everything just goes sideways mm -hmm. from there. Seven plays 13. That ball skips in. Time out. That was a point. It's eight plays, 13. That's when right. Zoom, one minute. There's a one minute break. You're watching the WPH Players Championship and a round of applause from the crowd here in Salt Lake City, Utah for this big Players Championship. We appreciate the fact that you've tuned in and also for sharing the link, telling people about this game, having them watch for the first time at racefor8.com. In fact, if you can, I know that you've been around the water cooler a few times at work and you've talked about handball and you've got those giggles and mm -hmm. people are always talking about uh, you going to tournaments and never watching the game themselves. So have them actually tune in at racefreight.com. Just send them the link and tell them to, to watch live. I did my part. I told my coworkers about ESPN3 and the one, one, one of them said, oh, oh like dodgeball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very similar. Said, yeah, well, just tune in. The next issue of Handball Magazine will be hitting mailboxes next month. The May issue will be highlighting the National Collegiate Championships, Women's Classic, the Master Singles, in addition to health tips, instructional, local tournament results. USHA members can also log in and watch and read that e-copy of the Handball Mag Play at ushandball.org. Paul s serves eight, plays 13. Paul has crept back in. Combination of off-speed by him, decent execution, and one or two close errors. Nice get. <laughs> Here goes the bottom board. Mondo's <laughs> just <laughs> unreal, isn't he? Now, you've played with guys, Vince Munoz probably being the guy. That's what I think of when I see Armando, yeah. It's just so similar when you see him play. Plays eight. But, you know, they're such mild-tempered people off the court, and yet on the court they're just complete uh, offensive machines. What, I mean, how does that... Out. Personality, or how does that happen? That's that's a good way to be to be able to draw on it when you have to. Eight and plays thirteen. Not have it affect your day to day life. That's I don't know the hows. I just well, I know some guys that play all offense that are completely nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Paul Brady seems to have it pretty yeah. contained. Although if you talk to him, he'll tell you that it's you know he's still in his own head eight. and he's really working on that. And but you don't really see it. Oh, look at that inside out left hander. He's in trouble now. Mondo's breathing pretty hard here as Paul's starting to make a comeback. This is game number two. Best two out of three to 21, breaker to 11. It's a side out. Mondo now four or five chances at that 14th point. Hasn't, hasn't gotten it. Well, it's a huge mountain to climb from Eight right here to 13. 21. These will be the toughest ones. I like that serve. Yeah, he got that mid-range height right there. Big but check up for Mondo. Time, Look at that, right in front of him. Paul, yeah. there at the point, Paul <laughs> says, go ahead and shoot in front of me, and that's, hey, Mondo's not going to change. Mondo is, Paul is saying the only thing you can do is 13 that, plays eight. so do it, and he did it. 13 to 8, Mondo's going to see if he can get a couple points here to get off the schneid. Look how far up Paul's going right now that, and he's right that that's he's right and mondo's right for just hitting it even lower 14 plays eight but that's actually very unusual his last two rallies paul was like on his way to the front of the server's box i think mondo makes a mistake there by not Thank looking you. back yeah, he just he backed in and let paul take that shot he should stay up there eight and look back 14. at least look back to see what paul's going to do short yeah, because he, he was hanging out a little too deep. Second serve. If, if he read the kill there, he probably would have got that. Oh, this is a huge setup here. Mm -hmm. Perfect location for Mondo Ortiz. Gets a side out. 14 to 8, second game. He lost the first one, 21 14, to 15. Plays eight. Trying to force a tiebreaker here. You know. Oh, mistake from Paul there. If Paul had a chance to do a lot more than that. When was the last time Paul went to a tiebreaker in the quarters? Was that the Luis Moreno well, victory? Last tournament. So I, 2000 I in the quarterfinals? Well, they were, I'm sorry, they were semis in Denver. 
Uh, that's one of those crazy look back. Well, it wasn't, I'm sorry, it wasn't actually a quarterfinal, but it was the opening round of the round robin play last year, the very his very Eight first match. 15. With Luis, was, was that a tiebreaker? Or was that just two close games in Seattle? Yeah, I They played Friday night at five. Yeah. A lot like this. I thought Paul played earlier in the day and not first against Tied Luis, out. but I could be wrong. I, I do know they played Friday. It was, it was, it was because 15 they were like plays number eight. two and number seven. So this like is that. the anniversary. This is the. <laughs> it could be, I, sh I should say. Look at that ball. <laughs> Elite right corner <laughs> kill. Paul thinks it skipped it in. I thought it was here. good. Mondo's got to sell this. I thought it was good. Mondo's got to sell this. I thought it was lucky, but good. Well, the referee's saying it's good, but yet Paul's staying in the service box. And Mondo. I thought it was good. I, I thought it, it was, was good. I thought. Mondo's conceding here. to tell here. even now. I'm okay. not you have, I you thought appeal? a little lucky because. Nope. you agree? John didn't see, so I'm going to call it good. That's a good ball. He got extra I under it because of a slight miss hit. The so point. it almost hit the floor off the sidewall, but it, I believe it popped popped up and it, it held it tight eight. enough and then rolled off the front wall. 16 to 8 is the score here. One guy said to me one time, what's the opposite of that? I mean, if it hit the ground, what would it do? I mean, that ball stayed mouse all the way around. No I, checkups, no crazy spins. To me, to me, it was good. And I, 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 the only thing confusing there was Mondo's reaction. 17 right. plays 8. I agree. Because he, he felt like a miss hit to him. It definitely, he got under it more than he was planning on. I, I don't think Mondo would have argued. And there's a nice pickup there from Mondo around the revolving door. Oh, look at that little stutter step look right there for Mondo. And then drive it. I like that. Held on to it. Oh, when he same, just misses. Same kind of thing, yeah. Slightly off the side of the hand. And it's a side out. Sometimes those fall in anyway. Eight plays 17. Let's see if Paul flips this to the right side here. Doesn't. I wasn't trying to predict that. No, this John. is the thing about, I, I know in his early days, a lot of people went at Paul this way, and he developed a phenomenal counter to it. He, he became eight. perfectly comfortable in that game, but looks like he hasn't really done it for a while. That, well, it's hard to do it when you're standing on that side glass, too, for the first time in a tournament. It's almost something you might want to practice a couple times with that glass wall. It's a little side intimidating. Out. Paul gets the side out really quickly, though. I mean, he had to develop. Coming up, play 17. immediately behind Tony Healy, he had he had to get comfortable with that pace. Right. But it's been a few years since he's had to deal with much of that. Wow! Look, look at how that. Mondo goes over the top of that ball to keep it down. It's got to be unnatural to him, the, the gunner, the gunner to be. He can't be mentally totally sold on that strategy. Somewhere inside. 17 plays eight. That's a good point. Well, like last night you predicted that. Naughty and Dave Fink would get on the court at 8.30 Mountain Time. And Paul skips that ball in, and it looks <laughs> as if M 18 plays eight. Mondo's just three points away from forcing a tiebreaker, and we could go past that 8.30 mark. Oh, oh, and Paul does that. Ball had a weird sound to it, but that's because Paul hit that flat fist shot. Eight plays 18. That's twice we've seen that, one with the right hand, one with the left in the last, I would say, five serves. Now see, to me, a center court over on lob should never work. Because you got to look to fly that. Because look, it has to bounce like mm -hmm. five feet from the wall to end up in the corner. Nine plays 18. He's either got to up bounce, just, yeah, that's, that's better. And just push it down the wall and hope that you have control. This ball should check up. Look at that shot from Paul now. It really does look unfazed. He's certainly been here before. Well, this is a good test for Paul. 10 plays 18. <laughs> it's odd to see Paul I doing this serve, but it, if he's getting points from it. And that's Mondo has to like at least show the cutoff. No screen call. Mar uh, I, I wouldn't call one Point. either as a referee, but Mondo was clearly shadowed there for a short 18. period of time, and now Paul scoring points here. Huh. This is interesting. Down it. 
Interesting. I thought Paul would go offense on that last one, and he decided not to take that extra step back and go to the right corner. He went back to the roof again. Really slowing the game down is Paul Brady. 18 plays 11. Well, this is where you see if it pays off. Is it? Has he slowed him down enough that he doesn't hit a great serve and shoot here? Well, that ball looked like it slid just a little bit on that left wall. Oh, look at that. Paul gets a side wall even and now back into the service box. Now, we've seen some players before that might be trailing 8 to 18, and they're just going to give it away. But they say, you know, I'm going to go ahead mm -hmm. and go in here and throw it up, do that's something a little bit different. They all of a sudden yeah. score points. 18. I'm not saying that Paul's doing this, but we've seen this before. Dave There's Chapman, always purposeful. Tony Healy, you know, you get to a point where you Second you, serve. you think, think that you're actually going to lose this game, so you're going to let it go. But you go out there and work on something, oh, and I think Paul is trying to find that something Second right short. now for what could Side be out. a tiebreaker. And if he but does score some points, you can just see that it's. It's, it's not, he's not sold on it either. I mean, it's a second serve, lob, double fault. That's 18, plays 11. That's not someone who's comfortable with that pace. He's just gambling on him being a little more comfortable than Armando is. I like that Smart right there. Shot. I like that a lot. Paul hits it into point. the ground, and there's a 19th point for Mondo Ortiz. Yeah, you got to figure. I, I wouldn't have thought this right away. Plays 11. Paul has to go strength against strength in the breaker. He's got to commit to who he is, not, not worry about his opponent yet. There'll, there'll be a day when, when he will be forced. Time will make him. <laughs> I don't think today is that day. Side out. 11 plays 19. The light deadens that ceiling ball. Uh-oh, here comes an offensive opportunity. Paul doesn't convert. And he went for that one, and it's a side out. You, you can't. Side out. Um, 19 plays 11. We'll see, they're both. Silvera and I actually had a few matches like this where we both decided to be smart and take <laughs> each other out of our games. <laughs> this, this is pretty much how it was. Hmm. But neither one of us were wearing a shirt that said Gunner on it when we were doing it. That's true. Yep. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, this is, yeah, this is Silvera and I outsmarting each other right here. Side out. Both of these players are going to watch us back someday. And to you, I say hello. Thanks for watching. And they're both going to be shaking their heads. Yeah. Wow. And there's Ortiz now bringing it to 20 to 11 and a, a point away from forcing a tiebreaker against Paul Brady. So last night when I said Possible game point. That the last time 11. they played, it went to a tiebreaker. I was just about 24 That's hours too early. You're amazing. <laughs> You're just sure. too smart for all of us. You're predicting the future when you pretending pretending a mistake. Second you knew exactly third. what you were doing too, didn't you? Yeah, I earned my first 10 million dollars tomorrow. <laughs> hey. Oh, look at that little revolving door from Paul Brady gets a side out. Side out. Eleven plays twenty. I'm thinking ten million is good enough. That would I'm okay with that. Set yourself up. Now Paul gets another point. You kill the serve. I saw good. One agrees, one disagrees. Point. Twelve, twenty. We've had twelve appeals <laughs> in all the matches so far today, and nine of them had a split on the referee. Paul just looks really out of sorts. That's the thing, if you're going to slow it down, twenty plays twelve. Are, are you committed? Are you mentally committed to doing it? Are you comfortable with it too? And oh, I'd there it is. I'm sure he won't. I'm really sure he won't in the break. Good game, guys. Five minutes. Tiebreaker.
Mondo Ortiz takes down Paul Brady 21 to 12 in game number two and forces a tiebreaker. And we're going to have a five minute break coming up right around the corner. We want you to stick close for that. We'll be here in just a few for John Bike and Molly Trotter, as well as uh, Linda and Jeff and those that are helping out, Omar Lemus. We'll be back in just a bit here at racefreight.com. Stick with us. places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. Are you getting this, honey? Oh, prime time. We are rolling. <laughs> All right, Mama's gonna bring it home. Mama's okay. gonna bring it home. Okay. 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 Come on, watch this guy. Oh, oh backwards. Oh, don't. Oh. It went into Bob and Carol's yard. Oh, no? Okay, yeah. here we go. Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. All right, let's see what you can do. Let's go. They might surprise you. Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle.
We are back live in Salt Lake City, Utah for the Players' Championship. This is the third match of the day as Paul Brady has just been taken to the limit against Mondo Ortiz. And we saw a whole different mannerism from Paul there toward the end of that game. He was trailing 8-18, to 18 and he ended up scoring another four more points after that. Mondo Ortiz taking Paul to a tiebreaker after losing the first one 21 to 15. Mondo wins 21 to 12 in game number two, and now we are in number three. All right, guys. One game to 11. Armando serves first. Zero play zero. Referee is Anthony Celesto. Zero to zero is the call here. Oh, and Mondo had that first strike up. opportunity with that amazing left hand, and he floors it. Pa Paul back in the box. Zero, play zero. I think you're going to see a different Brady here. Yeah, he's going to take what's got him here for sure. It's That's amazing serve in its own right. And look at that. I'm really hoping for a strength versus strength right tiebreaker because that's it's just thrilling. Zero, And they play both zero. have to believe in themselves at this point. And oh, by the way, this is a quarterfinal match. Brought to you by the player gets to pick his draw <laughs> format. <laughs> zero play zero. You know, we, oh, that's a great serve right there. It's Bread and butter. You know, we said earlier that that match of the tournament was th possibly Robbie McCarthy One and Emmett. Zero. But we underestimated Armando. Side out. Well, Mondo did not play well in Denver, and I thought, you know, if Zero that same guy shows up here, it's just not, I can see why maybe he picked Paul, but it's clearly the Mondo from New York. <laughs> Paul going with a fadeaway left-handed kill shot. Now we're tied at one. Mondo serving. One plays one. Going to 11. Short. The winner will face Robbie McCarthy tomorrow. And if Mondo were to win, Second he serve. and Robbie would look like geniuses probably for picking the guys they picked. <laughs> yeah. That looks really crisp too. Yeah. It makes it look really effortless. Two but plays one. I mean, Paul has like a Ten-year history ball. of somehow finding ways to win matches like these. Second serve. I was amazed in New York because he was clearly gassed, even in a tiebreaker. And then boom, he rolls out six balls and he wins. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he nice can do it under there. those circumstances. Let's see what he can do here. And look at that shot there from Mondo, fade away with his own left hand. How are these guys are able to, John, as a lefty yourself, you see that they can go fade away and then top the ball and keep it Three back down. You have one. to say, I can't even do that. I'm a lefty. <laughs> Although I know you can, but some well, of these guys are. Dave, I'm 65 years old. Well, come visit me and we go out to dinner, you will be. Thanks. Paul Brady inside out. Side out. And that reference brought to you by every time we go out to dinner, John celebrates a birthday and Owl. has to wear a sombrero while the whole cafe crew and restaurant workers come out and clap their hands and sing happy birthday. Those are good times. And each time we always say that you're older, way older than you really are. But back to this game, both of these guys decided to wear the, the, the dark blue shirt. Yeah, the, the R for eight, even darker than the current version of the ball. The closest, most hint. You know, Paul's lucky because his native colors are handball blue, so he doesn't have to Side out. One plays three. Short. Well, there's not a lot of people that can say I was up three to one Second against Brady serve. in a tiebreaker in a twenty thousand dollar first place prize tournament. Oh, oh was that an gosh. important shot? I was just, Side out. I just. Was waiting to see what he did with that. that. That's the pace he doesn't like, but it wasn't located very one. well. But clearly, Mondo has made Paul feel so uncomfortable in the server's box that Paul's trying all of these things 
to try to take that shot away from Mondo, and he does that again, and now up four to one. Yeah, well, I like, I think Mondo's not, like you pointed this four, out first, one. but he's not overswinging at all on those softballs. He's just absolutely within himself. Already read that well and did not capitalize. Point. Five plays one. Oh, there's Mondo talking to himself here. So you just made a note in the scorebook. On that, on that was short. That, that was short. It was a late call, but it was a right call. Mondo knows it too. But Mondo has to play that. He can't just stop and Second assume serve. it's going to be called short. Nice. Oh, Paul uh -oh. trips and falls Always. here. What happened there? Point. You hear the referee quietly call point. Let's take a look at that replay if we can. I didn't see Paul slip. I seen him trip, maybe pop possibly over his own foot. Really quickly here. There it is. Yeah. He just like tripped. A, like maybe a half of an ankle roll. And he does have ankle problems, but yeah, it's yep, a little there bit it is. of an ankle roll That's there. what it was. A Six plays one. Yeah. Back to live action, six to one. Oh, Mondo goes for that crack, just misses it. Now he feels it, seven to one. Point. This is where you call a timeout. You can tell in Mondo's seven eyes that one. he feels I, everything here. Yeah, you, Paul totally, because of how well Mondo's playing, even point. though it's not Paul's stand. Okay, timeout. Unbelievable. It was a point, eight, one, one minute. Well, either way, we're looking at something historic. I mean, we're either going to see the Gunner come back from 1-8 in an opening round match, or we're going to see him lose for the first time on U.S. soil in <laughs> years. Six, seven, eight years. Yeah. And, I mean, <laughs> we were pretty candid about what we thought about Mondo's pick. <laughs> and now, <laughs> boy, he can just say, uh, and I'd, I'd be happy to have him say it to me, too. I, I'd me, be, too. I'd, I'd be celebrating right with him if he said, oh, yeah, I made the bad pick, huh? You know, but we've had these stories about Paul Brady coming back from things like this mm -hmm. and finding ways to win. He just doesn't lose. Here's that great camera angle looking down the short line. Eight plays one. I have a feeling Mondo's going to go to his left here. He's been comfortable to the right, though. But that's... Didn't locate that well, but... Oh, and he does it again. Oh. Nine to one. And look at Mondo really quickly back in the box. Give me the ball. I'm comfortable here. Nine plays one. Uh, watch. Mm. Mondo Side didn't out. extend himself too much there. Let's see what Brady can do with this serve. I, I just don't feel that Paul has really located whatever strategy he wants to locate with Mondo. I don't know if he's figured it out. Just One kind of eight. let experience take over. Can't overthink it here. Just I like that serve, though. Oh, behind the back, Mondo hits it and gets the side out, and that could be the shot of the tournament. I certainly think so. We will not go to instant replay there because we're too close to Nine the end. Plays one. But Mondo just took one behind the back and got a free side out because of it. And the crowd loves it. Oh, that's a dangerous left uh -huh. hand. He's got a great shot here. Boy. Oh. Left wall was open, but he's still in charge. Another Wide shot. Mondo just gave him that. Yeah, had plenty of chances. Paul gave him three or four chances on that. You're going to circle that right one on the scorebook, yeah. too, huh? You got I have a lot now. of circles, but I haven't been able to talk about them. One plays nine. Paul looking to the right here. There he goes. Oh, look at that. Nope, it doesn't stay up. This is the kind of result you get. Ooh. That ball hit Mondo right in the eye. Check the ball, please. It's been a, remember, this match started with Paul Brady giving Mondo a punch right to the face when he Doing brought his arm back. One, and then plays nine. two shots later, he hit the ball right off his chin. So I have a good. feeling that if, if Mondo gets two more points, he won't remember any of that. A 
Agreed. Good. John couldn't see. It's a point. Two plays nine. Oh, inside out, hits the corner, right corner kill, and a fist pump from Paul Brady now at three to nine. These could be the hardest two points Mondo's ever scored in his entire life right here. Three plays nine. And the rumor around the club is that Mondo is two points away from taking down Gunner. He's and, not cracking. And the tournament goers are all here packed in to this gallery watching this match right here. This might be one of those epic picture moments. Nine plays two. Three, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, nine plays three. Give the assist to the crowd there for getting that referee on track. Wow. Saw it good. He, Paul appeals. I thought that might have been short. John couldn't see it. Oh. One disagrees. He's got to play two serves. Gonna, He's got to call I'm short. I'm going to call it short. I'm going to call second serve. Mm. I think I would have played two serves there. To totally... Second serve. I did think it was short, but it wasn't a unanimous overrule. And that would have been a nice time for the first footfall call of the match. <laughs> and there's a dip into the ground right there. Mondo could have been serving I would circle a 10. That. I would circle that second serve call. Three plays nine. Even though I do think that ball caught the line. That's short. Unusual for a ref to reverse himself on a... And we didn't go Second to the serve. replay just because it's too close. You don't want to miss any of this. Look at that little reverse, but not quite enough. I like that shot. Uh-oh, dangerous left hand again. Brady read it perfectly. That's a beautiful Point. underhand left paddle right there from Paul Brady. That time he took a lot off of it. Four plays nine. Second serve. Time out. Smart time Five out from Honda Ortiz. And it's really quiet here right Ball now. Serve. What a change. Look at this crowd. We have a whole separate angle up over to the left. Also looking at it's, a, it's a, even a quiet clap here as I think the, the crowd is stunned just as much as as we are here in the broadcast booth. We'll quickly get Molly Jean Trotter to talk to one of these competitors. Whoever wins this one is going to have an uh, emotional outburst, I have a feeling. And Molly is going to be there courtside with a live interview. I mean, Veronica Corningstone. I mean, uh, no, it's Molly. I'm sorry. I was reading my teleprompter and someone wrote that in. You're watching the WPH Players Championship. Round of eight, Paul Brady wins the first one 21 to 15, loses game two 12 to 21. And here in game three, going to 11, Ortiz was up nine to one, and Paul has scored four unanswered points. In fact, Mondo was serving. <laughs> Looked like he All right, he guys, felt play resumes. We have five plays nine. That he got an ace serve, and it was overturned, and then a quick side out. Short ball. That would have put him at 10 to three, but now he finds himself Second still, serve. still in the lead, but Paul serving and with some momentum here, obviously. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Go for it. That's a very wide corner. And that's Whoa. a hand air from Paul who banked himself behind Mondo for some reason there. Yeah, he played the tougher shot, and he gave Mondo the more open shot. That's Nine plays five. I think Paul Although Mondo has established his left down the left. Yeah, so I think he wanted to take that away from him. There it is. Oh. Left hand, money. Point. Possible match point, plays five. Let's listen to this crowd here. Whoa! There it oh is. Oh, my gosh, what a way to end it. There it is. Woo! Unbelievable. <laughs> Look at that. Great match. 
Look at that emotion from Mondo Ortiz, who's going to soak this up as much as he possibly can. I don't see him leaving the court anytime man. soon. He's going to have to stick around as Mondo Ortiz takes down Paul Brady here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And a round of applause from the crowd here. And Mondo high-fiving the crowd at the sports mall. He gets the, the hug from the fans. What an amazing moment here in Utah. Round of eight match, John Bike, as Mondo Ortiz takes down the gunner from Ireland, Paul Brady. And it's all, all started by the, the yeah. call out. He had the choice. He said, I'd pick Brady. Yeah, and, and, and we're wrong, but it, it, I mean, I'm wrong. It, I think most of everybody that saw that Mondo picked Brady was wrong, except for Mondo, who now looks like a genius as he takes down Paul Brady. And hopefully we can get Molly Jean Trotter and Mondo on uh, camera here. We'd like to hear a little bit from Mondo Ortiz about this legendary win. The last two times Paul Brady's throw. lost on American soil, it's now been Luis Moreno and Mondo Ortiz. And I, I know those two are it, rivals themselves and they kind of grew up in the same class. Hopefully we can get a little bit of those words as earlier today we talked to Mondo about his amazing comeback. We had that on film and hopefully we can talk a little bit more about that comeback from open heart surgery and now taking down one of the best players of our generation, Paul Brady. And let's go courtside here really briefly with uh, Molly Jean Trotter, who has Mondo uh, right here on the show court. Molly. When we are like sitting out there in the stands. A lot of people pe pegged Brady as winning this match, but it seems like you, you know, obviously you changed it up in the second and third game. What were those changes for you? I mean, uh, you know, give it to Paul Brady, you know, it's getting, being undefeated at the U.S. for years. And uh, to be one of the defeating him is just so special for me. I mean, uh, all I did is just uh, slow down the pace. You know, I felt like I was too uh, amped up and, you know, I was focused on my serve and eventually I pulled through. And what do you think was going through his mind? He doesn't really show a lot of emotion, and you just kept hitting shot after shot, point after point. At you know, at one point there, you know, three to one in the beginning of the third game. I mean, you just were getting, you're building such a big lead. How was that? How'd that feel for you? I mean, it feels great. Once you have a big lead, your confidence level most, it goes up, and so all my shots were falling through. You know, luckily. And so, how does it how does it feel to win this match against Paul Brady? <laughs> this is was a dream come true since I was a kid. You know, I mean, I was just. Uh, Imagine myself as a kid playing against these top pros, and here I am, and winning them, uh, beating them, and it feels so great. All right, well, great job. Everybody says you did a good job, so nice work. <laughs> Back to you guys. Yeah, they did. They did say that he did a good job. They gave him a standing ovation, and there was about 250 people that gave him that applause that we know of. And I know that it's lit up all over uh, Twitter and Facebook, people talking about this Mondo Ortiz upset of the gunner, Paul Brady, and you can still see him basking in the glory here what Mondo can't do, though, John Bike, is make this his Super Bowl. He still has a tournament to run and, and try to run through, and that's uh, certainly what is on his mind is now he is getting toasted uh, by the crowd, all coming up and giving him the congratulatory handshakes and hugs and talking about those shots that he made behind the back. Mondo Ortiz takes down the legend. Paul Brady here in the opening round. We're going to have another good one. Some more fireworks next as Nadia Alvarado faces David Fink, number four versus number five uh, seed oh, here sir, sir. as we okay, broadcast live at race4eight.com. We'll be back in just a bit. Stick with us. Here we go. We're going we're gonna to make some juice. It's going to be good. She's excited. A little bit of kale. Please don't put this on the I'm line. putting it all over the line. It's wet. It needs something. No, it'll go. Don't break my juice there. Looks good. You ready to try it? Come on, baby. Let's Challenge try. your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's okay. okay. Like it. right. They might surprise you. And she took another sip. You saw it? Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. Ahern Rentals is the largest independently owned and operated rental business in the United States. We are proud to maintain outstanding working relationships with over 100 manufacturers, including JLG, Skyjack, Genie, Kubota, Multiquip, Honda, and many more. From coast to coast, Ahern Rentals is here to service your equipment rental needs. For a complete list of locations near you, please visit us at www.ahern.com or call 1-800-400-1610. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself. 
but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org.